Welcome back to the tutorial on how I make my 12 inch crochet ballerina doll. So in the first part of the tutorial, we did finish up the head and insert the eyes. And now we're gonna make her arms, legs, and body. So I do already have one arm done. So we're gonna get ready to make the second arm. We are gonna use the I Love This Cotton in the Antique Gold that we used for her head. And then we're also going to use this. This is also I Love This Cotton in this green color clearly i lost the label so i don't know the exact color that was on the label but as you can see it is a green color when i'm making projects like this i do try to use the same or very similar yarn types we are still using a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook i want to make sure that you also have stitch marker scissors and i am still using the fairfoot world polyfill dark so to start this second arm we are going to do our magic ring and we're going to do five single crochet into the magic ring so um clearly you're going to make two arms if your doll has two arms you're going to make two arms but like i said i do already have one arm finished so we're just working on the second arm and we are going to do that magic ring and then do five single crochet into the ring once you have the five single crochet into the ring you can go ahead and close it pull the little string so that it closes tightly and then we are going to do two single crochet into each stitch around and so at the end of this round you should have 10 single crochet so again you want to do two single crochet in each stitch around Okay, so when you get to the end of the round where you're putting two single crochet in each stitch around, like I said, you should have 10 stitches. And you do wanna make sure that you put your stitch marker into that last stitch. And then you're gonna do one single crochet in each stitch around. And you are going to continue to do that all the way through round 14. At the end of round 14, you do wanna change colors to the top color that you'll be using. But again, you do want to do one single crochet in each stitch round, and you do want to make sure that at the end of each round that you are putting your stitch marker in there because we are crocheting in the continuous round. So there should be no joining, no chain ones, anything like that. You are crocheting in the continuous round. And so it's important to have that stitch marker there to know where your round is ends and begins here you just saw me flip the crochet to the right side um, whenever you're crocheting you're in the continuous round your work tends to flip in the opposite direction or to the wrong side and I do sometimes see people who use the wrong side as the right side that's your preference that's your choice uh, it, it's up to you. There is a difference in the way that it looks if you are using the wrong side There is a difference in the way that it looks The way that I can tell if I'm on the right side or the wrong side is by my tail So where I did my magic ring and the tail the tail should always be on the inside of my work That's how I know which side I'm on because my tail should be on the inside so if my tail is on the right side or hanging out and it's like on the side that I'm working on then I know that I didn't flip it but I can also just look at my work and can tell the right side from the wrong side so again we're just gonna crochet 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 one stitch and one single crochet in each stitch around it should be 10 stitches uh, you might want to do a count every few rows or rounds 
just to make sure that you didn't miss a stitch or add a stitch also when you get to round like five or six you want to go ahead and start adding some body fill in here because you do not want to wait till you finish this whole arm and then try to go add some poly fill. This poly fill is what is giving your arm the shape. So you want to make sure that you're able to get it in there so that you can have a uniform, consistent, just pretty <laughs> looking work. So here we are at the end of round 14 and we are going to go ahead and change or join in the green color like I said this is also I do know that that is also um, the I love this cotton yarn as well so again I do try to use something that is similar to the same type of yarn that I'm using for the skin tone just because I just like the way that that looks like I want the yarn to be consistent throughout so this is how I join in my color I just finish off the last stitch with the color that I want and then I go ahead and continue to crochet as I normally would so we are just going to add our stitch marker back in here because this is the last stitch of the round and then we are going to just continue to do one single crochet in each stitch around and so normally now when I am joining in colors normally what I will do is crochet over the tail also note that I am going under both stitches so I'm not doing a front loop only or a back loop only on this particular project a lot of times when I am adding clothes that are non removable I will go into the front loop only or the back loop only because that will help give the illusion that the clothing is removable when it's actually not but for this um, top I, I didn't want that effect when I think about ballerina tops well a lot of times the ballerina tops normally don't have sleeves and then I give mine sleeves I know a lot of girls wear the the ones that are like like the spaghetti strap type ones but for some reason whenever I make my ballerina dolls I like for their tops to have sleeves I don't know it's just a personal preference so Again, we are just doing one single crochet in each stitch around for a total of 18, like you have a total of 18 rounds at the end. So we need to do four more rounds with this green color and then we'll be able to fasten off and move on to the legs. So again make sure that you put your stitch marker into that last stitch and also make sure that you are adding your polyfill as you go so again that was round 15 so we have three more rounds of the single crochet in each stitch round Okay, so we did finish round 18 
here we're gonna go ahead and fasten off I do leave somewhat of a long tail and you will see why later on after we connect the arms to the doll's body if you don't leave a long tail it's okay just make sure that you still have enough of that whatever color yarn you use to to use it later on but I do just leave a long tail to use later so now we're gonna move right into the legs of the doll again I'm gonna start with a magic ring and I am going to do six single crochet into that magic ring we are still using the skin tone the same yarn that we've been using for the skin tone this is I Love That Cotton and Antique Gold. We are still using the 3.5 millimeter hook. So we're gonna do our six single crochet into the ring. We are then going to pull that ring close. And now we are going to do two single crochet in each stitch around, which should give you 12 stitches at the end of the round. And so we're gonna go ahead and put our two single crochet in each stitch around and then make sure you have your stitch marker ready to put into the last stitch. And for the legs, we are actually going to continue the one single crochet in each stitch around for 20 rounds. The first leg you are going to fasten off. The second leg you will not fasten off. And so, just like with the arms, we do want to make sure that we don't forget our stitch marker and we also want to make sure that we are adding our polyfill every few stitches. So, like I said, once I get to about round five or six, I'll go ahead and start adding polyfill and then we'll continue to add polyfill every couple stitches, like every two or three rounds, not stitches, every two or three rounds. Okay, so we have that first leg finished, and as I mentioned, you do want to go ahead and fasten off on that first leg. You can even go and weave in the end if you want to. And then for the second leg, you don't want to fasten off because we're going to go right into the body with the second leg. So I'm going to finish up this second leg, and then we are going to because her top is supposed to be like a ballerina leotard we are just going to go ahead and join in the green color at the end of round 20 on that second leg so again the first leg you are going to go ahead and fasten off and then the second leg you want to join in your top color so that you can go ahead and start working on the body of your design.
Okay, so we are finishing up leg two, and you will notice here that I am about to join in my top color onto leg two. Now, instead of doing it into the last stitch of that round, I'm actually joining in my top color on the 10th stitch of the round. And the reason I'm doing this is because of the way that I join my legs. I join my legs with a chain three and I did not want to go straight from a color change to the chain three. I wanted that color change to be a bit more secure before I did my chain three. So this is why for leg two, I do my color change on stitch number 10 in that last round and then I do two more stitches, stitch 11 and 12 with the new color and then I will do my chain three so that I can join my legs together. So I still put my stitch marker into stitch 12 because that's still my last stitch but like I said I do my color change on stitch number 10. So we are going to chain three and then we are going to pick up the first leg that we made and we are going to do a single crochet into the first stitch of that first leg or the first stitch after after your fasten off. So you want to go ahead and do a single crochet into the first stitch of leg one and then you're going to do a single crochet into each stitch around leg one or the next 11 stitches and you want to do that all the way around and once you get to the 12th stitch on leg one you're going to chain three again if this is a part that's tricky for you in the pattern because i know it's sometimes difficult I have a hard time even saying it now or even typing it out when I'm wording it. I'm like, I know what I'm trying to do, but I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly. So if this is a part that might trick you up sometimes, then pay attention to what I'm doing here. It's really simple. It's not complicated at all. The, train, the chain threes act like a bridge and they're just bridging your two legs together. So... Here you see me get to that last stitch of, of the first leg. I'm going to chain three again. And now I'm going to go into the first stitch of the second leg. And we're going to single crochet into that first stitch. And then single crochet into each stitch around. Okay, so we are back around and you do still want to put your stitch marker into that last stitch but this is what it's going to look like I'm just pushing in the little excess yarn so that it's out of my way but this is what it looks like like I said the the chain threes act as a little bridge to join your legs together now for the next rounds that we're going to continue to do or this round coming up just note that we are going to single crochet into the chain threes as well do not skip those they are you know they count as part of your stitch count now so you do want to make sure that you are doing your single crochet into the chain three stitches as well as the stitches on your legs 
So we are doing one single crochet in each stitch around, including your chain three stitches. Okay, so we are coming up on the end of this round and at the end of this round you should have a total of 30 stitches because you had 12 stitches in each leg and we added six chains so you should have a total of 30 stitches right so for the next round we are going to continue to do one single crochet in each stitch around so this next round we're just doing one single crochet in each stitch around now th there is a gap or hole there where you did the leg join don't worry about that don't worry about trying to close it we will close that up I will show you how I close that up when we get ready to assemble our doll or attach our doll's head so don't think you did anything wrong because there's a gap or a hole there that is how it is supposed to look and you just keep working one single crochet in each stitch around make sure that you're adding some polyfill every few stitches and we're just going to continue to work into the body of your doll design so you want to continue to do the one single crochet in each stitch around for three more rounds. So you should end up with a total of six rounds from the color change or the leg join. So it should be, if you're counting from the leg itself, then it'll be round 26. If you're counting the way I count, which is I make the legs you want to hold like I start from one again then this would you would go to you get to round six so if you're counting from the very beginning of that second leg like I said this would be you would go through round 26 or I just like to start the count over and this would be round six so go all the way through to round six of one single crochet in each stitch around.
Okay, so we finished up round six, and this is what it should look like. Make sure that you've added your polyfill in there for round seven or round 27, depending on how you're counting. We are going to do one single crochet into the next nine stitches, and then single crochet decrease. So one single crochet into the next nine stitches, and then we're gonna do a single crochet decrease. So again, if you're not familiar, I do do the invisible decrease. If you're not familiar with what that looks like, you can see what that looks like here. And then once we do our decrease, we are going to do one single crochet into the next 13 stitches. So single crochet into the next 13, and then single crochet, decrease again. Now, a note about this, what I'm doing is trying to come in like right at her sides. So, if you notice that, hey, my stitch number nine is not right at her sides, or my stitch number 13 is not at her sides, then you can move it over by one stitch or maybe you need to come back two stitches. Again, we are just giving her a slight waist, not a whole lot of waist, just a little bit of waist. So wherever your side lands at, that's where you want to do your decrease. And then I'm gonna single crochet into the last four stitches. I think sometimes when people have patterns, they get caught in doing exactly what the pattern says. And the amazing thing about crochet is that what your tension might be or what my tension might be, might be a little bit different. It's okay if you have to adjust by one or two stitches. Now here, we're just gonna do one single crochet into each stitch around. And so no decrease or increase. We're just gonna one single crochet into each stitch around. You should have a total of 28 stitches because we did take two stitches away. So in that last round, we did take away two stitches, like I said, one on each side. And so you should have a total of 28 stitches for this next round. But in watching this, hopefully you don't get so caught up in I have to do exactly what the pattern says that you're not able to make adjustments and make modifications so that your doll looks the way that you want it to look. If you notice that, hey, my, you know, my decreases are way in the front or way, if they're like way off, then you might want to go back and do, you know, redo your count. But if it's off by like one stitch or two stitch, just move it over. Just be like, oh, my, my side was at stitch number 10, not stitch number 9. Or I had to single crochet to stitch number 14. I promise you, if your count is still the same, then you're going to still be able to continue the pattern either way. Okay? I hope that makes sense. But I, I oftentimes get messages from people saying, oh, mine, you know, doll didn't come. And I'm just like, Baby, why didn't you just move that over? If you felt like her torso was too long or she had too then don't do as many rows of single crochet. Now, we are going to do a total of six more rounds of single crochet in each stitch round so we are actually up to round 14 or round 34 if you're still counting from the leg and in this next round which is going to be round 15 or, or round 35 we are going to be joining in the arms and so here i'm going to do one single crochet in the next 10 stitches and then I'm going to pick up one of the arms and I am going to single crochet into the first stitch after the fasten off. So one single crochet into the first 10 stitches. I'm going to pick up the arm. 
I'm going to do a single crochet in the first stitch after the fasten off and then we're going to do one single crochet into the next nine stitches of the arm and so here you see me doing again one single crochet into that stitch on into the first stitch of the arm and then we're just going to continue to do the one single crochet around the arm. Okay, so after you work that last stitch on the arm, we're gonna go back to working the single crochet onto in the body. So we're gonna do one single crochet into the next 14 stitches of the body, and then we'll join in the second arm. Now, just like I was saying previously with the decreases on the side of the body, the thing with the arms is you also want your arms to be at the side of the body. So once you join in your second arm, I normally stop and kind of look at it to make sure that my arms are even. You may find that you might have to go up a stitch or maybe yours doesn't go into stitch 15. Maybe yours goes into stitch 16. Y'all, look at the doll. Make sure that the doll looks aesthetically pleasing to you. Don't just do what the pattern says just because, and then you're like, oh, well, my arm ain't even, or my arms are not even. You can move it. You can, you can move the arm, y'all. It's okay. It's okay if you move it to a different stitch. I promise you, it it's still going to work out the way that it's supposed to work out. In this case, I did 14 stitches on the body, and now I'm going to single crochet into the first stitch of this arm or into the stitch after the fasten off, and then I'm going to do a single crochet into the next nine stitches of that arm. And then you will see me kind of look at it and make sure that I like the way it looks or do I need to move it. The reason I say this is because not everybody is going to use the I Love This Cotton. You might want to use a different type of yarn. You might want to, you know, use a different crochet hook. I know I say use the 3.5. Somebody's going to use a different crochet hook. I know somebody's gonna use a different type of yarn. I can't speak to every yarn, every tension, every crochet hook that someone decides to use. Now, once I get to the last stitch of that arm, I'm now gonna do a single crochet into the next four stitches of the body. When I write my pet, I can only write them according to what I'm doing and the yarn that I'm using it is a guide but it's not the end all be all you absolutely have to do it this way you see me looking at it you see me saying hey do these arms look even do I need to move one back move one up now I'm gonna be completely honest I probably could have moved the arm to the right up one stitch but I ain't feel like it I was tired <laughs> I was over it 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 looks good but in hindsight looking at it now i probably could have moved it up one stitch again y'all look at y'all dolls and y'all do what's aesthetically pleasing to you don't be in my inbox talking about your doll is lopsided because you didn't want to move the move the arm don't don't do that Okay, for this round we are doing one single crochet in the first 10 stitches 
and then we're gonna do a single crochet decrease so we're single crochet in the first 10 and then we're gonna do our invisible decrease and then we're gonna do one single crochet in the next six stitches and then we're gonna single crochet decrease and so once we do those six stitches then we're gonna single crochet decrease again And again, I'm doing the invisible decrease. And then we're going to do one single crochet in the next 14 stitches. So just doing the one single crochet in 14 stitches here. And then we're going to single crochet decrease after we do the 14. And, and basically what we're doing is bringing her body in creating some shoulders so that we can get into her neck but we're taking away four stitches so we're on the 14 and then we're gonna single crochet decrease here and then we're gonna do one single crochet in the next six stitches and then single crochet decrease and this is what I mean by even if you had to move the arm up a stitch or back a stitch you still would just continue the pattern as it's written like this as long as you're taking away four stitches on that next round you're going to be perfectly fine and then we're going to single crochet into the last two stitches so just one single crochet into the last two stitches but if you adjusted your arms it's fine you can still follow the pattern to make sure that you're taking away four stitches for the next round so now we're down to 44 stitches because we were at 48 and we took a stitch away so now we're down to 44 now we're going to do one single crochet in each stitch around so just one single crochet in each stitch around and like I said that should be 44 stitches and then we're going to do another decrease round but here we're just doing one single crochet in each stitch around and watching this back I realized that rounds 18 and 19 just got deleted somehow I know I recorded them however I don't know where they went and I cannot seem to find them but for round 18 you will do one single crochet in the next two stitches single crochet decrease and then round 19 you will do one single crochet in each stitch around and here you see we are at the end of round 19 and we are going to change to or join in the skin tone yarn again so we can go ahead and make the neck of our doll again my apologies for round 18 and 19 not being shown I searched and searched and searched for the video I know I recorded them because this was all one video but I cannot seem to find the footage so again we are joining in the skin tone at the end of round 19 for round 20 we will be working in the back loops only okay so as I mentioned we will be working in the back loops only we are going to be doing one single crochet and then a single crochet decrease and we are going to be doing this in the back loops only um, it gets a little tricky to do the invisible decrease in the back loops only but you will see me do it here it can be done you just have to kind of angle your yarn in order to get, pick up the stitches okay but it 
like I said, it can be done. It just gets a little tricky. So one single crochet and then a, a single crochet decrease in the back loops only. You're gonna repeat this all the way around. At the end of the round, you should have a total of 22 stitches. So at the end of round 19, you should have had 33 stitches. At the end of round 20, you are going to have 22 stitches. Okay, so this is what your design should be looking like as far as the body for the end of round 20. For round 21, we will just be crocheting in each stitch round. You do want to make sure that you go ahead and add some polyfill or stuffing in there. Um, make sure that you're adding some to the shoulders of the arms as well. So you want to be sure that your arms are filled in as well. And for round 21, we are just going to do one single crochet in each stitch around. Okay, so that was the end of round 20. For round 21, we are going to do one single crochet in the next three stitches and then a single crochet decrease. You're gonna do that for a total of four times and then you will have two stitches left. You are going to decrease over those last two stitches as well. So it's going to be one single crochet in the next three stitches and then a single crochet decrease and then you'll repeat that one single crochet sing, um, in the next three stitches, single crochet decrease and like I said, you'll do that four times and then you should have two stitches left at the end and you will do a decrease in those last two stitches. That will give you a total of 17 stitches for that round, and then we will go into round 22.
okay so for this round we are going to do one single crochet in the next stitch and then single crochet decrease you're going to repeat this all the way around when you get to the last stitch you're just going to do a single crochet into that last stitch because you're going to repeat this and then you'll have one stitch remaining at the end and you will just do a single crochet into that remaining stitch this should give you a total of 12 rounds or 12 stitches and you will then do a couple of rounds of just single crochet in each stitch around and that will form her neck and you will actually be done with the body of the doll so as I mentioned when you get here you're gonna have like I said you're gonna have one stitch remaining and you're just gonna do a single crochet into that stitch And for these last two rounds, we are just going to do a single crochet in each stitch around. You do want to make sure that you do add some polyfill in here. So go ahead and stuff, stuff, stuff. Um, again, don't forget about her shoulders and her arms. So you want to kind of move that stuffing around so that it's going into her shoulders and arms as well. And as well as her body. And then once you have it stuffed, like I said, go ahead and do your last two rounds of just single crochet in each stitch around. Okay, and so this is what your design looks like. You can go ahead and fasten off. I do leave somewhat of a long tail because I will use that later on. Gonna add a bit more stuffing. And we have finished her body. The only other thing we need to do is sew up her armholes. And so we'll do that. But other than that, her body is finished. Okay, so like I said, we do need to sew up her armholes. There's just a small hole there for where you join in the arms. This is the reason why I did leave a tail from the arms so that I could use that tail to sew up those armholes. I do add a bit of stuffing in there before I sew it up just to make sure that it is firm and looks the way that I want it to look. But once we have the stuffing in there, then we can go ahead and grab our yarn needle and we can go ahead and get her sewn up. I do somewhat of a running stitch around her arm to sew it up, and then I just kind of hide the, the yarn into her body so that it doesn't come unraveled or anything like that. But here, like I said, you just see me kind of doing, doing a modified version of like a running stitch around that armhole 
to sew it up there and to make sure that that is closed and secure. We're going to do that for both sides and your body of your mini ballerina will be finished. All right, so that's her body. Next up, we are going to work on her wig cap and doing the additional facial features and getting her head attached to this body. 